And welcome to The Verdict, Kent Myers and Mick Cornett here with you again uh, uh, this week with another interesting show on The Verdict. Today we're having the Honorable Glenn Mulready, the Insurance Commissioner of the State of Oklahoma. Mick, how have you been? I've been good. been spending a lot of time at home um, and uh, and trying to get out. and, and uh, How's Terry you know, doing? What's that? How's Terry doing? <laughs> well, probably wishing I would leave home probably more than more often than, than not. Uh, no, a lot of togetherness time in these days and a lot of time to watch uh, the rest of the world go through some dramatic times. And we've, we've got a guest today that that is kind of keeping his finger on the pulse of Oklahoma and how it's going to affect his industry. Well, yeah, uh, when you talk about the business of insurance and you talk about a pandemic, uh, there are a lot of intersections there that uh, could cause some opportunities or some problems. Uh, businesses are going to change. Uh, yeah, indeed. Well, you are watching The Verdict. We will be back uh, in just a couple of minutes with Glenn Mulready. I was very lucky to have Holmes Tuttle as my father. In 1965, my father and two other prominent businessmen in Los Angeles went to Ronald Reagan and encouraged him to run for governor. As time went on, they garnered a number of other prominent people to support Reagan, and that's what became known as the Kitchen Cabinet. I'm Bob Tuttle. I'm the former United States Ambassador to the United Kingdom, and I'm very proud to be a Chickasaw. On the day that President Reagan was inaugurated, and there were my parents, uh, seated very close to the president in the presidential box. And I thought, you know, maybe we wouldn't be here without my father. That was a very, very proud moment. I can remember him saying to the president, Ron, this is what I think is best for the country. Every time I come to the library, I walk down the colonnade so I can take a look at that beautiful plaque. I think of my, my parents to see them there and know how important they were to the Reagans and how important the Reagans were to them. And all he wanted to do was to do what was best for his country. When my father had passed away, President Reagan spoke at his service, was, was very moving. And I think part of his growing up in Oklahoma um, made him love his country, love his nation, and uh, the pride of being a Chickasaw. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at profilesofanation.com. One of the best kept secrets about the Post 9-11 GI Bill benefit is that it can be used at a trade school or a technical school, and it doesn't have to be used at a university or college. These are benefits that the veterans have earned through their service, and they should take advantage of it. Veterans really need to understand that there are many resources offered by the Oklahoma Department of Veteran Affairs. They are there to help you find the right school for you, the school that will help you and your family make great steps into your future. back to the verdict uh, Kent Myers and Mick Cornett uh, uh, glad you have chosen to join us today we really do appreciate it our guest today as we indicated in the open is the Honorable Glenn Mulready the insurance commissioner actually the 13th insurance commissioner the state of Oklahoma has ever had uh, Glenn took office January 14th of 2019 prior to becoming insurance commissioner, uh, Glenn was elected to the House of Representatives for several terms and truly distinguished himself in that role. Uh, he was, is a Republican and in a Republican legislature, he was uh, elected majority floor leader, which is quite a, uh, an honor in the leadership. Uh, he has had uh, prior to that time, extensive insurance industry experience in various capacities. So when he was elected insurance commissioner, he had the background necessary to know what to do and to know how to solve problems. Uh, he doesn't limit his activities to the insurance business, however. Glenn is active and successful in a number of uh, business and charitable organizations. And in uh, 2019, uh, Glenn uh, and his wife, Sally, 
uh, were awarded the uh, by Leadership Tulsa the Paragon Award for their work with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Quite a nice uh, adventure. But Glenn, sure good to have you. Thank you, Ken. Good to be with you. Appreciate the uh, opportunity. Glenn, we're about four months into this uh, pandemic, and uh, you know things have changed. People are are living their lives differently. Businesses are having to respond differently. How is your office? And I'm talking about the day to day mechanics. How how does your office been responding to the changes in the workplace? Yeah, well, the, at the insurance department, like like everywhere, it has it has changed dramatically, right? Uh, so. A little little irony for you. In my first year in office, I was uh, in the midst of building a new building, beautiful new building at 50th and Lincoln, and uh, we had uh, the grand opening with the governor uh, on March 4th, ribbon cutting. So I'll repeat that date: March 4th, <laughs> we had ribbon cutting with the governor, and on uh, March 16th, I guess 12 days later, we sent everyone home, basically. <laughs> so we had a, a beautiful new building to work in, and everyone was working at home. Uh, there, were, there were probably six or seven of us coming in, and um, uh, and I was coming in every day. But it was just real, real ironic to have this uh, nice new space and, and and no one working in it. However, what we've said is that you know the doors are closed, but the insurance department is not. And so we continue to serve the the, the people from Oklahoma. We had our um, continuity of operations in place, and you know within that first week, you discover a couple things that were missing, <laughs> right, in your continuity of operations. And for us, mainly that was just the mail handling, just the very practical purpose of distribution of mail and, and that piece. And so we click, quickly developed a system to have folks come in, uh, not at the same time and, and do that for each division. And so um, the work has continued. Um, I'll brag a little bit on, on a certain section that what happened there mid-March, uh, we have a testing vendor who tests for uh, insurance licenses and adjuster licenses. Uh, in fact, the same vendor uh, does our accountancy board uh, license. But they're a big national vendor. And when this hit, they went down. There was no opportunity to take another test to get a license. And so, um, and they shut down for at least a month. They, they, they said, okay, at least until mid-April, we're shut down. I went to our team and just said, listen, it's just not acceptable that we tell people, look, you can't enter the insurance business. Uh, we, meanwhile, people are losing jobs left and right. You know, we don't want to have a hurdle or, or additional uh, um, hindrance to getting a license. And so we, we put up, stood up a, temporary license process. I'm proud to say we're the second state uh, in the country right one day behind Texas uh, who did that. So we uh, implemented, unfortunately, it was a full manual process, but we've processed over 500 temporary licenses this time too, uh, so that folks can get, get on with work and we uh, had a system to do that. So quite proud of our team. Well, let me ask you, Glenn, uh, first of all, uh, a couple of questions about your staff. Uh, how many on your staff uh, normally? We, we have a team of about 125. And we've got about eight folks in our Tulsa office. Uh, and then in our main Oklahoma City office, the rest of our folks are all there. Uh, have you any of your employees been uh, uh, affected uh, by in being infected with the COVID virus? Yeah, early on, uh, actually, we had, we had an employee who was. Um, and this was when everyone was working from home. And, uh, but they just, they quarantined and uh, without incident, we, we, we've moved on. We haven't been, our employees themselves haven't been personally impacted by it as far as infection rates with any of our, our folks. But, uh, you know, we're being careful, uh, even, even as of today, uh, we had our employees come back basically on June 1st, uh, but they're teleworking. So we're, we're typically having half the people in the building that are typically there. But then in addition to that, I've got anyone who's 65 or older or anyone with any underlying health conditions, they're work teleworking uh, full time through the end of July. Here, at least, we just extended that another month. So, we're kind of playing it by ear and see see what happens with our numbers before we move forward with uh, long term permanent plans. Glenn, I heard that you know during the height of the virus, obviously some people were financially impacted, looking to cut corners, and they also weren't driving very much. And so there was this understanding that people were starting to cancel their their automobile insurance. Was this really taking place in significant numbers and could your office monitor it? Well, the great question, Mick, because as you, as you can imagine, everything is shut down. No one's commuting, I mean, virtually no one. And uh, so um, from a, a personal auto uh, policy standpoint, not a lot happening there. Now we did not see or hear a lot of uh, cancellations, 
But I think a lot of that may be due to the industry responding, as it should, from my way of thinking, you know, as opposed to me mandating something. What we've tried to do throughout this pandemic is offer guidance uh, and, and, and let the industry respond, and they have. And uh, I'll give you a number here in a second that I think is pretty staggering, but uh, and what they did is a number of different companies, they just saw a reduction in claims. People just aren't driving the miles. There aren't the accidents. And so they were offering rather than waiting till the end of the year for some kind of return of premium or lower premium on renewal, they've offered midterm refund of premiums or credits uh, onto their accounts. And so those have ranged from 15 to 25% of the premium for March, April, May, it actually continues. But that number, I've had my team tallying that uh, on the impact of Oklahoma, but $193 million has been returned to Oklahoma auto policy uh, holders. Mm. Uh, to credit to their their uh, auto insurance policies because of the the less miles being driven and the, and the lack of claims. So I'm pretty proud of the industry uh, that responded like that midterm, seeing people are hurting that they could use that help right now, and, and they did that. They stepped up. Was that something that uh, the percentage that you mentioned was that something that was pretty well uniform across the United States, or was that uh, different state by state? No, it, it it has differed slightly state by state, uh, Kent, but but. That's that's pretty pretty general numbers uh, uh, as you, as you go across and you know it's uh, you know some other things that they responded with um, you know again just recognizing what was happening on your typical personal auto policy there's an exclusion if you are delivering commercially if you're being paid to deliver anything that you need a commercial auto policy not a personal auto policy and so uh, companies step forward and. Uh, and did away with that waiver. They realized folks are having food delivered, they're having groceries delivered, uh, and there are a lot of folks stepping up to do that who weren't working and now are able to do this, you know, these different services. And so a number of different companies stepped up and, and uh, got rid of that uh, exclusion. Again, not not because of a mandate that we required that, they just saw what was happening and responded. So it's been great yeah. to see. I know uh, there's been a lot of uh, stimulus dollars heading into the to the state, uh, you know, from the federal government. Has that impacted uh, the economy in ways that you see out of your office, or has that been uh, handled in other ways? Yeah, I, I think it indirectly has, Mick. Not not us directly, but uh, you know, so many small businesses, and you know, on the I've had a lot of conversations on the health insurance side of things, small employers trying to keep a health insurance plan in place, right? You've got, you've got folks uh, laid off or businesses are shut down. Um, you know, one thing that I did step in and do uh, was, uh, you know, required uh, many, many uh, general liability policies for commercial businesses are based on uh, receipts or on payroll. So it's an auditable number. So typically at the end of the year, hey, we thought we were gonna have X number of sales, Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, we audit that, and then you have a reduction in your premium or an increase in your premium that you've got to pay. We did step in and say that, listen, you, the commercial auto, uh, not co auto, but commercial liability companies, you have to allow for midterm audit. And I think, and I was really being sensitive to the bars and restaurants who often are based on, on receipts or payroll. And, you know, you're shut for, shut down for two or three months. You've done an estimate at the beginning of the year that you know is not going to be accurate. And so that would allow them to step in and do an audit and reduce the premium now for them versus uh, year end. Uh, Glenn, let me step in and get us to a break. Uh, sorry for the interruption. We can come back to that uh, after our break. Uh, we are visiting with Glenn Mulready, the Insurance Commissioner of the State of Oklahoma. Mick Cornett and I will be right back in two minutes. OU Law has a history and heritage that are unparalleled. At the University of Oklahoma College of Law, we empower our students to pursue the career of their dreams. We have the highest U.S. news ranking ever achieved by an Oklahoma law school. We are the first law school in the country to launch a college-wide digital initiative. And this year, our competition teams rank number two in the nation. OU Law, generations of excellence, limitless possibilities. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. 
a legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. to the verdict, uh, Kent Myers and Mick Gornett with the Honorable Glenn Mulready of the Oklahoma In Insurance Commission, the commissioner of the Oklahoma Insurance Commission. Um, Glenn, what uh, are the major problems that you're facing now in the insurance industry because of this pandemic? Well, I, I think, um, Kent, depending on which, which aspect we're talking about, I think, uh, you know, the health insurance side of things, yeah, uh, something we're sensitive to, and we're having lots of conversations. We're trying to help. In fact, I believe tomorrow there'll be a big announcement coming out uh, on one company, what they're doing. But um, I think I earlier commented about health insurance plans, small groups trying to hang on to that. So so that's a problem, trying to help uh, groups that businesses that are hanging on, trying to stay in business to retain their their, their health insurance. Uh, and then for those folks that uh, whose businesses have closed down or people have lost their jobs we've got so many un unemployed right now uh, how to acquire health insurance from there you know whether that's going to the, the marketplace or uh, through Cobra if they're part of a larger group uh, or we also have our uh, a lot of folks don't know we've got a Medicare assistance program here at the insurance department it's, it's funded by federal dollars but we've got uh, folks in our Tulsa and Oklahoma City office just to help folks walk through their uh, Choices once they're Medicare eligible. So we don't we don't sell anything. Uh, we certainly just provide information and compare things for folks. So uh, that, that's on that end. On the property and casualty side, uh, you know, I might add too on the health insurance side, the individual is something uh, I, I've worked hard on too is getting more competition. So we we currently have three individual health insurance companies here in the marketplace, and uh, we are hoping that next year. Uh, I know we'll have another one on there. We, we may have two more. So we might have five options on for next year for folks to choose from. So I'm a big believer in free market competition. Again, it you know drives down costs, uh, improves innovations and efficiency. And so uh, that, that's always a good thing. Uh, again, back on the property and casualty side, um, you know, there's a lot of push because of the pandemic. Uh, lots of questions about the loss of business income. Uh, some folks have purchased loss of business income. Some policies just don't have it. They did not have that coverage. Uh, but typically what business income is intended to take care of is when there's a loss at your, at your property, your, your building, there's a fire and you're out of business for two months, it replaces the income that you would have had. Most of the policies are, that require that that damage be at your building. And so therefore with a pandemic, there, there really was an exclusion in there. So, but because that has affected so many people, there's push in Congress and some other places to try to do something differently there. So I think from an industry perspective, there's a lot of concern about where they're going to go with that. Uh, uh, it's ex extremely concerning if they're trying to do something going backward versus whatever they might try to do, be forward looking. So you know, that's a concern in the property and casualty uh, uh, industry. Um, I also got a number of calls with our recent uh, uh, what do I want to call it? the protests and, and civil unrest? I know a number of uh, TV stations we did some interviews and concerns about exclusions with that. Now, the good news on that end is that typically, uh, almost 99, probably 100% of the time, uh, civil commotion, vandalism uh, is a covered loss. So uh, you didn't have the exclusions in that that you did uh, due from the pandemic. Now, some folks uh, may not have plate class coverage for those folks that uh, had some damage during any of that, but for the most part, those would all be covered losses. So that was another big, big issue that we got a lot of calls on. Glenn, what uh, 
uh, trends or projects do you have in your personal office or what trends are you seeing around the country in, in, in the insurance industry? Well, uh, for us, Mick, we're trying to um, grow our captive insurance uh, industry. We have uh, really uh, built some, some expertise at the, at the department and uh, to try to, and we changed our laws over the last five years to make it an attractive place for a captive. And, and just quickly for, for viewers, Captive insurance is really just a, a, an insurance company that's been established to sell insurance to itself. In other words, uh, a, a large company with a fleet of trucks. They may send an insurance company up just to insure those trucks. They don't sell any insurance to any third party. They're just insuring them themselves. So uh, at any rate, uh, we're hoping to draw some business there, and uh, we've changed our laws to try to make that attractive. So that's a growth area that we see for, for our department and, and, and for our state. We're very focused, too, on education. We think that's a big part of our role under the heading of consumer protection, which we think is our number one priority, uh, but it's just educating consumers. And, and like I just talked about with, with Kent on someone's lost their health insurance, just educating them on what their options might be and where to go and, and, and how to look for that. Uh, and then I think the third uh, for us, our emphasis is just again, growing growing competition, trying to attract companies. Uh, we, we have tried to develop a, a uh, I, I call it a personality, but a insurance department personality in Oklahoma of being uh, fair and reasonable and uh, business friendly, but still check those boxes to make sure that we are protecting consumers. But we want to make insurance companies know that uh, we are open for business here and welcome them to come and, and offer products to our, our citizen consumers of Oklahoma. Uh, Glenn, recently, uh, this last week, uh, the voters, I guess, uh, if the final returns have then have passed a state question 802, which expands Medicaid uh, if and when it becomes effective. Uh, assuming it does become effective pursuant to this vote, uh, what impact will that have on your office or on the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, insured public in Oklahoma? Mm -hmm. Well, um, that was a tight race too, huh? I think 6,000 yeah. Out of over 600,000, so uh, yeah, that was crazy, crazy tight. But um, we don't really have anything to do with Medicaid specifically. Uh, that is a federal and state partnership with the uh, Oklahoma Health Care Authority, our Medicaid agency. And um, I had a meeting with their uh, new executive director maybe a month ago and with their chief of staff and COO. But really, that was focused more around the Insure Oklahoma program. And discussing what's going to happen with that that's something that we've had in place since 2005 uh it's been a pretty unique program that uh, has subsidizing premiums for small groups uh, for low-income folks that are part of small groups and as part of that medicaid expansion um, that's probably going to go away and uh, so we had some discussions about how to retain some of that because there'll be there'll be followed fallout of people that did qualify for insure oklahoma but will not qualify for medicaid uh, expansion and um, so I just was trying to bring bring awareness to them and, and make sure we continue that conversation to try to help these small businesses keep keep small group coverage in place. But outside of that, Ken, to go back to your original question, we really don't have any uh, interaction with the Medicaid program at all. Okay, Mick, we just have about a minute. Okay, uh, time's running out, Glenn, but uh, w what can our viewers do to help you and your office uh, perform well? Hey, well, th thanks for asking. I think I'll jump back to that education question. I mean, always just educating yourselves, uh, contacting your agent, reviewing your, you know, we launched when I first came in office, Mulready says, get ready. And so we've got to utilize that for flood season, for tornadoes, for retirement, but it really, it really carries across the board. But I think just understanding what you do have for coverage, reviewing that with your agent. Um, our website, we have done a total redo of our website uh, in my, my first year here. And so I would encourage uh, folks to visit our website, oid.ok.gov. Lots of good information on there. We have a very specific COVID section that they can click on uh, that banner and get all kinds of details. We issued a number of bulletins related to COVID and what health insurers had to do. And, and that was an, another attempt to protect consumers. And so um, there's a lot of good information on there. I would drive them to that website for some good, good education. 
Uh, Glenn, I'm afraid that's going to have to be our final word. It's good that it comes from you rather than us because we're just out of time. Uh, Mick and I appreciate very much you coming on and talking to our citizens. Uh, we've been visiting with the Honorable Glenn Mulready, the Insurance Commissioner of the State of Oklahoma. Uh, you're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. It used to be okay in hospitals. It used to be okay in movie theaters. It was okay in classrooms, restaurants, and airplanes. But thanks to a greater understanding of the dangers, that's not okay anymore. So now that we know secondhand smoke causes lifelong health problems, why is it still okay to smoke with children in the car? Bottom line, it's not okay. Let's get serious about protecting kids. Join the fight at StopsWithMe.com. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. We have uh, uh, children come from a different lifestyle, different mindset. You have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we try to do with these kids. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Welcome back to The Verdict, Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. Mick, uh, Glenn's doing an awfully fine job out there at the Insurance Commission. In, in, in times of, uh, of change, if not crisis, for, for a lot of Oklahomans, you know, when, when people are out of work or when people are, uh, you know, not able to keep their businesses open, insurance is one of the first things they're thinking of. And, and I think what, what Glenn offers is a very steady hand in a very troubling time. And I think our viewers probably sense that. Um, and I also noticed that he, he sent the workers home to work, but he was in the office every day. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, showing the leadership that I think we've come to expect. Sorry, we got to cut it off right there. We're out of time. Appreciate you and all our viewers, and we'll see you next week on The Verdict. See you next week.